So high level, today we're going to speak in three different parts. <laughs> what is the general idea of the protocol, which is Polygon, and then what's new for Polygon, and also what's next for Polygon. So we're going to split it, this entire call in three parts. So before we get started, let's have a quick introduction to everyone on the call. Aishwari, do you want to go first? Absolutely. So hello, everyone. My name is Aishwari, and I am basically for, I, I'm a finance guy. I am not a techie, but I fairly understand how this technology works. And uh, I've been into the space from almost three, four years now. And uh, the major things that I've been doing is, uh, so in the past, I've very much been indulged in education. I have worked in a cryptocurrency exchange. I've worked in a cryptocurrency bank, which is licensed. And I've also now I'm working with Polygon here. What I do is basically I help uh, various projects that want to create or that want to onboard Polygon and are in the DeFi space and help them create the strategies for them. They go to market term, uh, strategies, the collaborations, giving out grants so that they can grow or make their products, creating their marketing strategy so that they, 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 they are visible in the market. And apart from that, personally, I also assist a lot of projects which are in the web3 space helping them get the recognition or get directing them so that they can get into the market the right way awesome very interesting background and enzo do you want to introduce yourself hi guys so i am enzo um for me my background is mainly in economics i also worked in a financial institution a traditional investment bank for three years and my specialty is basically in data analytics and economic analysis so hi guys i'm really happy to be part of this all right so ashwari can you give us a two minutes quick intro of what polygon is so i think uh, the biggest uh, the biggest thing to introduce polygon is basically it's like the transactional layer of ethereum where we are trying to help uh, the Ethereum blockchain to uh, uh, to go out and do the transactions at a cheaper rate, at a cheaper rate, and at a faster pace. So, if you talk about Ethereum, because of the limited block space that Ethereum has. Uh, and the number of transactions that people want to do. The biggest challenge with the people face is the high fee and uh, slow uh, transactions because uh, Polygon, oh sorry, Ethereum usually uh, has somewhere around a TPS of 15 to 20 transactions per second. So that's that's something which is there. So in order to boost and in order to ensure that the Ethereum ecosystem, uh, the people are able to do the transactions at a, at a granular level as well. Polygon serves as the uh, as one of the one of the solutions is like the plasma layer where we enable the uh, products to go or the platform which have onboarded us to go out and do the transactions at a fairly cheaper rate which is like zero point zero one dollars or less and fairly we we can say we are one of the cheapest la uh, layers where the transactions can be done and we leverage Ethereum for security in this particular process. So that is where I can define what Polygon is all about. A layer two, which is helping layer one Ethereum to go out and scale. And are we only talking about Ethereum? Uh, yeah, uh, we have aligned our focuses with Ethereum, but that does not mean that we cannot connect with other blockchains. Just that we have chosen to go out and you uh, be with Ethereum. Uh, we have a, we have the architecture built in a way where we can go out and connect with any other layer one, which is there to boost it, its network and to boost uh, make it more scalable. But because we align with the idea of decentralization and we want that decentralization should prevail, that's why our main and the only focus currently is Ethereum itself. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because focus on one protocol at a time. And would you say that the main objective and specific problems that Polygon wants to address is just scalability in transactions. It's a very specific problem that you're looking to address. I mean, that is one of the solutions which is present with Polygon. I wouldn't say that the Polygon is limited to this. This was the limitation when we had like uh, uh, when we were just Mantic and we were just talking about a plasma layer. Today, we are not just uh, a plasma layer. We have grown mm -hmm. our product suits. So another one is the POS chain. Where, uh, where we are also working as a smart chain itself to help the products uh, just get directly deployed on us and not on Ethereum itself. Another is something which we are looking at in the future or we are already developing is the, uh, is the enterprise suit that is there. So we have already uh, deployed a billion dollars uh, fund uh, out of which we have bought in uh, the various uh, block uh, the various zero knowledge proof blockchains to onboard the enterprises on us uh, so yeah that's that's just one of the solutions we have a host of solutions that we are building here now awesome so if i could summarize what polygon is think of ethereum as you know a big city where you take the bus from one place to the other and it you can get from one place to the other 
it just takes a while. You have to wait for the bus, you have to get on the bus, the bus can only fit so many people. What, po what Polygon is doing is to build a highway or an interstate or the expressway to connect one place to the other. So instead of taking the bus, waiting for the bus, you have this highway in which you can have all sorts of vehicles going on the highway to go from one place to the other. And this city is very specific to Ethereum. And this, this um, highway is basically where transactions flow. How do we get people from one place to the other? Absolutely. And this is exactly what we're talking about today, which is layer two scaling solutions. This highway, or this is the layer two, which helps to transport people, hence transactions, from one to the other, make it faster, make it cheaper. And today we're going to talk about that. Before we start diving into the layer two solutions and what, what is the latest layer two solution of Polygon, just one quick understanding. How does Polygon compare to layer ones like Solana and Terra? And how does Polygon compare to layer twos like Arbitrum and Avalanche? So uh, to answer this, basically, instead of going on to what other blockchains do, what I can say is for Polygon, which is where what we have. Uh, so I think uh, Polygon is can be said, which is battle tested already. Uh, if you talk about the, the scalability or the number of transactions that can flow, we have over 3 million transactions, the legit transactions that actually happen uh, on the blockchain, uh, where we are fairly processing them very easily, uh, even with a lot of so uh, if you compare it with other blockchains even when so uh, recently if you see there was something called a sunflower game which got exploited by the bots and literally we had so many transactions going down so the only thing that happened was that the cost of doing transaction increased but the systems were intact i mean that way we have built fairly a system which can prevent dos attacks and which can which which enables us to go out and claim that no matter what is built on us we are battle tested and we are not getting shut down so that is one of the biggest the biggest achievements that we have if we compare it with other chains because of their high requirements they usually get attacked and they usually shut down for hours and hours which is not what a blockchain is all about so that is one of the biggest things that is there as far as the normal cost of transaction that goes. So if you if you see the, and compare it with other chain uh, other chains, uh, then what will happen is uh, the transaction cost is the cheapest I would say among all the biggest chains which are there. Uh, like uh, and we are we are way way cheaper at that. Uh, our transaction cost is less than zero point zero one dollar or somewhere around that. Uh, which makes us uh, which makes us the uh, the transaction layer for Ethereum. And that is what we are you that what we have chosen to do. And we do not want to go out and replace any chains. We do not want to go out and say that we are better than any chains. Just that we want to say that we want to ensure whatever we are doing, we are the best in that. So whatever other chains are, they have their own. I would say they have their own use cases. They have their own flaws. They have their own. Uh, sets of issues that they want to solve uh, but fairly enough we can say for polygon that it has already chosen ethereum and on the ethereum it has already it has already solved the, tra the transaction layer problems which were there on ethereum and now in order to go out and ensure that all the other chains even if you talk about the other la other chains or other layer tools that are there those layer tools have a specific use case whereby what we have done is we have just not stayed to one use case which is just being a plasma layer which uh, what but uh, what we have also ensured is that the zk rollups that we are trying to roll out and with ethereum 2.0 coming in this is going to be one of the biggest uh, use cases so that see uh, we have we have three types of users i would say the first type of user is the normal user who wants to go out and do the trans for the finance transactions on the blockchain so we have already got the defi space and uh, our poly polygon blockchain if we compare it with any other blockchain is like uh, as compared to the tvl logged which is there on us we are the most uh, revenue productive product in the market and uh, the second thing that uh, that the youth that people come in is nfts gaming and everything so we are already having a lot of uh, and we have an nft studio which is ensuring that all the nft products can be easily launched on us and the third is enterprise so enterprise also where uh, where a lot of blockchains will figure it out how they want to onboard block, uh, onboard these enterprises these uh, so we have already ensured that our partnership with EY has ensured or it is working towards uh, on the test net it's already deployed once this is successful we will roll it out for the enterprises itself so the financial products with the web 2 and the enterprises their customers are using they are, they are bound to come onto the 
on to the Polygon blockchain because that's where solu their solution is lying now. Uh, thanks, thanks for that, Aish. Um, that's great. I really like how um, Polygon is really doing their own thing and not really minding what the competition is doing. But I would like to quickly segue, like, for people like me who are just really new to the crypto space, can you just briefly um, explain what the Plasma Layer is and what a Layer 2 and how it works or a Layer 2 solution is and how it works? So uh, Plasma Layer is something. So what happens is instead of going out and using the block space of the Ethereum main chain, what you do is you go out and use the Layer 2. And this layer two, what it does is it bundles the transaction. So for example, uh, uh, in a very layman term, if I explain, so if you want to do one transaction on the Ethereum chain, that would cost you, let's say on an average $23. Uh, that's the average of the whole year last year. So $23 is something that you're gonna cost. Now what I do is instead of going and uh, using the block space of Ethereum, I go out and use the block space of Polygon. And uh, what I do is uh, I batch those transactions, create a batch of, let's say, a thousand transactions and just upload the summary on the Ethereum blockchain in one transaction. So that way, what I did was instead of using one one, one those thousand transactions on on the on the mainnet, which is going to cost somewhere around a thousand or like thousand dollars into 23, that's twenty three thousand dollars to add here. What we have done is we have bundled that up. The total cost for bundling up is like somewhere around two, three dollars in total. And then what we do is we just create a, a summary and we upload that summary on the Ethereum mainnet, which ensures that the security of those transactions is met tomorrow. If, oh God forbid, if something happens to the layer two, the data is never lost because what you can do is you can simply pick up from the last snapshot or the last summary that you have uploaded on Ethereum and continue your transactions from there. So that way we, we, we also ensure that the security is maintained of those transactions and at the same point, uh, give that speed and enable that kind of a number of transactions that can be done at like fraction of the total cost that is there if you would have done the transaction on the Ethereum chain. Great, great. And would you happen to know like how many layer two solutions are there? Like how crowded is the space? And like I know, like you mentioned earlier, Polygon is doing its own thing. But then is I think that... so, uh, the other chains are like, for example, Optimism is there, but Optimism works on a different uh, architecture as uh, Ar uh, Arbitrum is there. Again, something which is there, which is working on a different structure. Valadium is there. Again, something. So all these, there are other layer twos also, but all these layer twos are basically trying to structure themselves as something which is uh, i would say most uh, most of these solutions and most of the solutions which we which are being tried so we are just trying to battle test which is which system is going to be the most efficient one but yeah i think these are the these are the um, other uh, you can say layer tools like zk uh, zk snark zk sync um, we have arbitrum optimism so these are i think the other layer tools which are there okay great great thanks for sharing um, and like I mentioned earlier, like I'm new to the space and if I'm not really familiar with um, Polygon, like can you name a few projects or a few solutions that are built on the Polygon network? I mean, absolutely. If you, if I go sector wise, let's say lending and borrowing, we have QuickSwap, we have Aave also integrated. If we talk about uh, fund management, we can talk about the fund management from the perspectives of uh token sets if we talk about let's say pay payment and streaming uh so there are solutions which are working on creating the payment streaming systems like i think uh, sablier is working on polygon integration already and uh, if we talk about synthetics so synthetics also we have gains we have uh, if we want to talk about just staking in farms we have day two uh, which is one of the newest projects which is there uh, giving you a good amount of return somewhere around 20 23 percent on stable coins then uh, we have other platforms as well i think if you name the sector i can give you like we have a list of like 3000 dApps on polygon so absolutely if you name anything that you want i can just give you uh, the examples of those platforms okay great great so to, mainly to summarize this part so the layer to solution again, Polygon is mainly working on a cheaper alternative to um the other solutions that is really in the market right now. 
And yeah, like you mentioned, there's really a lot of projects um, across different like genres or industries <clears throat> that's really built on the network. Absolutely. So let's, now let's dive a little bit deeper into the core topic here, which is the your new your new release ZK Rollup. Before we go into ZK Rollup, you mentioned there's optimistic, there's plasma, there's lightning chain, there's there's POS chain. <laughs> now we're also talking about ZK Rollups. So can you give us a quick high level comparison of what these different chains are? How do they compare? Some pros and cons. I mean, uh, the first one is optimism. So optimism is something. If I talk about what optimism is, so optimism, as the word suggests, is optimistic. So it's a ZK rollup uh, functionality, but what they do is basically optimism is something where uh, you uh, the architecture that they have built. If I have to lay it down in a layman term, so let's say I am very optim. If I am optimism, I am very optimistic that nobody would cheat the system, and any and every transaction that is coming to me, I'm uh, assuming that this is going to be a fair transaction. So what I am doing is, as the transactions come in, instead of putting them in a memory pool, I'm just keep uh, keep on adding them on the on uh, in in the block in order to go out and in order to mine uh, complete the block and then mine it so here what happens is i am optimistic but i am not that optimistic that i will be 100% sure that okay every transaction is going to be legit so what happens is let's say once you deposit your funds on arbit uh, on optimism you can do all the uh, num- all the tra- layer 2 all the transactions on the layer 2 of optimism but when i have to withdraw my funds so optimism goes out and says that you have to go through a 7 day process in order to withdraw your funds to the main chain which is ethereum now why they have taken a seven day uh, co- uh, co- period they want to go out and in a, uh, so if you want to withdraw your funds they would get, uh, enable this for a kind of a sort of an audit in this audit basically what you have to go out and do is in this audit the the miners or the people on the on the platform who are running the nodes what they are going to do is they are going to use this particular platform in order to check whether the transactions are legitimate or not so if the transactions are not legitimate uh, the uh, people can the uh, the miners or the people who are looking after the chain they can just go out and pinpoint okay these are the transactions that are not legitimate and if the transactions are not legitimate those transactions will not go to the main ethereum chain and the person who has highlighted this will be rewarded for it so that is optimism if i talk about um, another one which is uh, zk sync or arbitrum so here what they do is basically uh, zk sync is another kind of a zero knowledge proof solution now here what they do is instead of being optimistic they check all the transactions that are happening there and based on uh, so the transaction between layer one and layer two are very simple but if you have to go out and if you have to use that same transaction from layer two to layer two that becomes a challenge because here the mathematical calculations are done in order to go and complete that particular transaction which is done so that is what the zero zk rollup is so that's another solution which is there plasma is where all you do is you just bundle up the transactions create a uh, create a snapshot and just upload it to the main chain and there is another side chain which is there now the side chain is something which is exactly what ethereum 2.0 is going to be uh, now here in the side chain what you do is you go out and run parallel transactions and after running the parallel transactions you instead of going out and uh, letting the layer one do those transactions for you these parallel tran- parallel chains just run and complete the uh, po- portion of the work which is the analytics or the computation work for you parallelly and uh, in parallel what they do is they just upload the snapshot of it so that is what is uh, uh, what is you can say a side chains now if i talk about polygon polygon has all of them now because of the acquisitions and everything that we have done we have all these uh, all these solutions which are in some of them are live some of them are in the building and uh, within the, i think within the next year or this year itself most of them will be live so that all types of things can be uh, done through polygon itself awesome so if i can summarize layer 2 is really about different ways of batching up more more transactions going back to the analogy of taking the bus from one point to the other or taking the highway to go from one point to the other the bus route is where you can only have or the car route is you have smaller transactions going through and it's it's less in a batch. But if we take the expressway and you run like a big bus on that, we can batch up more little transactions together, be on the road to go from one point to the other. So that helps the scalability. There are a lot of ways to do that. You have the, ver- the various kind of roll-up mechanisms that uses a little bit more technological innovations to do that using, using zero-knowledge proof roll-ups. 
The other one is plasma chain, which runs parallel to, which is another chain that runs parallel to the main chain. Then it batches its order and then update on the main chain. So at the end of the day, what layer two is, is a scalability solution. What is What are we trading off? We're, in quotations, we're trading off the security of it, but really the security is always back to the main chain Ethereum. Ethereum is, is secure on, in its own right. All the security of every single transaction to make sure that there is no double count or double double entry. Oh yeah, double counting the same dollar spent. All that security is done within the main chain Ethereum. And layer two is just focusing on having more of these transactions going on. Right now, Polygon has three main solutions, Plasma, uh, Proof of Stake, and ZK Rollups. Can you explain a little bit more about Plasma chain versus side chain and what the Proof of Stake chain is? So uh, before that, I just want to uh, if uh, if someone wants to relate to some other chains. So this is exactly what Polkadot is also doing. So there is an analogy of uh, Trilema. Uh, uh, Trilema. What exactly this Trilema is? This Trilema is all about three things. One is decentralization. How decentralized your blockchain can be. The second thing is how scalable your blockchain can be. And the third is how secure your blockchain can be. Now, any blockchain which is able to solve all these problems is going to be the ultimate blockchain in the future. Now, when we talk about this particular thing today, when we talk about Ethereum, Ethereum is all about security. Ethereum is all about the decentralization that is there, but the speed is lacking. So here, what you do is you plug in the layer two to enable that, uh, that speed, thereby solving a trilemma using two chains. Similarly, if you talk about another one, if I give you another example, which is Polkadot. So Polkadot is something where what Polkadot is doing is Polkadot is becoming a layer zero and layer zero is something where Polkadot goes out and says that we are going to provide the security for all the blockchains that onboard us. If you ever have heard of the word parachains and the hundred blockchains that are going to onboard Polkadot. So what they are going to do is they are just going to go out and enable. So they, uh, so with security being done by Polkadot itself, they are going to be more about the other two things which is decentralization and speed so this is one analogy now if you talk about the layer the, the difference between plasma layer and side chain so plasma layer is something where all these transactions and everything so plasma layer is just where you bundle up the transactions and you put it forward and uh, so this in this what will happen is you won't be able to do complex transactions of smart contracts and everything whereby a side chain comes into the picture a side chain is able to handle those complex transactions of smart contract and those smart contracts can be run very easily on the side chains while on a plasma chain this becomes a very tedious task to do and if you try to do a lot of uh, these transactions there what will happen is your speed is going to load up lower down to a very very higher bit so that is what is the major difference between them Apart from them, they both are doing the exact things, uh, the exact same things, which is bundling up the transaction and putting the secure, putting a snapshot on the main Ethereum chain, thereby saving the block space on the Ethereum chain and enabling lower, uh, lower costs and higher speed. So, correct me if I'm wrong, with Plasma chain and side chains, it's all about bundling the transactions, putting it on main chain. So, how I, how I imagine this is, let's say we have a train, a proper subway, or you know, with blocks adding to the chain. So, let's say a subway. In a subway, you have different subway cars. So every time in the main chain, you have every transaction is passed, it goes into the subway car. Once the subway car is full, it closes, it's added to the chain. And every X minutes, it's, this chain just keeps growing. This subway just keeps growing. What layer two solution does, what plasma chain and side chain does is instead of one individual entering the, or one file or one transaction entering the subway car to, to be added to the system, it's a zip file going into the, going into the subway car. And this zip file, on the mainnet, it looks like it's one transaction only, but inside the zip file, if you unzip it, it's all the different transactions that's happening on plasma chain that's happening on side chain. Is that how we scale using these side chain solutions? Absolutely. That's, that's exactly how we do it. Great. And the, to summarize a little bit more about the comparison between plasma chain and side chain, because there's a lot of confusion that they are pretty much the same thing, but it is, it is not the same thing. And Plasma Chain will be a bit more straightforward, simple, simple solution of bundling, uploading, and adding to the system. Whereas Side Chain will be more specific and more technical, which is a, a very specific chain on its own. Is that how we compare them? 
yeah so uh, that's exactly what it is and even like if you if you guys uh, if you want i later on i'll also share a document which i have myself written on scalability where i have basically compared all these things and uh, so exactly this is what i have done i have just talked about ex- uh, these things how the scalability works what are the things that the scalability does and everything so there what you can do is with this this might or uh, document might give you even more clarity on how these things work so hop hop has a question he said i don't have the exact numbers now but at some side chain but at some side chain has a single node controlled by binance with 36% of stake what is your view on this oh at some point binance controls 36% of the stake uh first of, i i'm not sure what chain is that because on polygon nobody controls that big a share uh the other thing is basically when we talk about this so basically when we are talking about let's say plasma solution so let's break it down into two solutions one is the plasma solution so when you talk about these plasma solutions the point here is basically not the security and it is not about those center uh, it is not about that particular thing where someone can control a lot of things here the point here is basically about because the security is maintained by the main chain the security is not maintained by the plasma or the child chain so plasma there is another word for this that which is known as the child chain so here uh, the uh, uh, so all the transactions that are happening here so it does not matter uh, it will not matter much even if the chain sometimes got forward it, it won't happen because that's something that uh, all these layer 2 uh, ensure that nobody gets the 51% holding but if even that happens also what can happen is because the security is not the prime concern or the security is not the main thing that the plasma chain does then surely you you would not you would not be affected by this because if someone takes out that 51% or something like that all we have to do is we just have to take the snapshot from the previous transaction which we uploaded on the ethereum chain which is a zip file that you were talking about and we can again uh, bring it back to life from the point where it was originally there so that's the first thing the second thing is when we talk about side chains so the side chain another uh, another thing that i forgot to tell you there here side chain is something where the security is not maintained by the main chain the security is maintained by uh, by the blockchain itself so in, when you talk about side chains here the side chain has its own security mechanism which is where polygon comes in so polygon when it, when it works as a side chain so it has its own security it does not depend upon the security of ethereum it has its own no so the, like the nodes that you have those nodes in uh, ensure that all the transactions and everything are happening and the security is maintained by the network itself so that is basically one of the biggest uh, thing here for that what happens is if if you are going out and using it as a side chain then yeah uh, it is just like another uh, smart contract chain and when you when you compare uh, with again all these things what will happen is you will be, you will understand that all these things are something where uh, all the problems and all the things that we go out and we talk about is something which is created or which is uh, which is where the side chains are pegged so like if you remember the earlier question that you asked also why or whether polygon is only going to do these things for uh, ethereum so this is where what happens is these side chains can connect with any network to boost them up so that is another thing so this is where uh, if if the number of validators on the nodes are something where we have set number of validators which are 100 so those 100 validators go out and approve and again now the point here again which is we have to ensure that none of those validators gets uh, gets more than 51% so that is why this is something which is taken care by the foundation itself that uh, nobody has that kind of a power to go out and change anything thereby ensuring the security is maintained of the network pop main asked you know how decentralized is polygon as a scaling solution what are if with the foundation controlling a good amount of or the the foundation managing a good amount of what's going on and how decentralized it is what who are the validators in the space who are the different nodes yeah how so, centralized is it and what are the pros and cons okay so again like i told you in the start itself polygon is about scalability uh, the the decentralization part is not something that decentralization and secure or uh, the the security part is taken care by the ethereum itself so here because of this particular reason i would say that even if polygon has a limited a uh, 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 uh 100 validators and uh, some of the majorities of the stakes are man- managed by the foundation itself it does not matter much because the ultimate chain which is the ethereum that is decentralized so here like i told you this is this is how we are solving the trilemma 
where security and decentralization is maintained on the ethereum net and what we are just doing is we are just becoming a transaction layer so understand it in a way where you have banks and a central bank now banks are something where you have a every bank has no matter what whether it's a private or a public bank if it's a private bank majorly everything is controlled within the management of that particular bank but what happens is who decides the rule of those management that is something which is a central bank now the central bank is ethereum so all the rules and everything is decided by ethereum through its decentralization but with the banks that you have the private banks that you have here so those private banks are something which are just following the orders of something which are happening there so that is something which is the difference here got it and what would be some some benefits to that because as you mentioned decentralization is in the main layer itself and here we're just focusing on scaling and with the trilemma exactly that you mentioned, with trilemma, it means that you can choose two, you can choose all three. One thing it will be a trade off, always, no matter what. And I here, mean, till date, till date, there is no other blockchain or no blockchain that exists that can say that they have solved the trilemma. If I talk about Solana, Solana has a very so uh, de Solana is not decentralized; it is highly centralized. And when again, even even a uh, avalanche, a majority is centralized. Why? Because the minimum requirement. So. If you want to understand decentralization, decentralization basically means if I'm having a laptop in front of my screen, which is for my daily day-to-day uh, -day use case, what I'm doing here is instead of going out and instead of actually using this uh, laptop for my personal work, can I become a node right now? For Ethereum, the answer is yes. For any other blockchain, the answer becomes no. If I talk about even, let's say, take an example of Solana, the minimum RAM requirement is 128 GB. I mean, who has 128 GB worth of RAM sitting in his home? Nobody. So that is why what happens is if, if, if you go out, so if you talk about last month, I think Solana, when it went down for 14 or 16 hours, somewhere around that, uh, at the same time, Ethereum was also hit by a DOS attack. Only 1.14% of the nodes of Ethereum got impacted. While on the other hand, Solana shut down for 14 hours. Why? Because basically Ethereum is so decentralized that even if you attack certain nodes, majority of the nodes will not be impacted by that because more, majority of the nodes might not even know that that kind of an attack happened because they are so much decentralized. However, when you go because the... the so why... One of the things that people need to understand is why reducing the cost on Ethereum for transaction is going to be a pain point is because DOS attacks can be very easily done if your transaction cost is low. That is why that is why the, the model right now, which is for Ethereum, why people still trust Ethereum and why Ethereum is still retaining its number two possibly can go even higher. But the, this is the biggest reason why, because if you go, if you want to have a DOS attack at night also, so Vitalik wrote a very nice piece on this. He said at 2 a.m., let's say there is a DOS attack that is happening. What do you do? You call up your friend and say, please start running a road node for me right now on Ethereum. Well, your friend can do that. But if you if the same thing is happening at 2 a.m. at night on Solana, which has a minimum requirement of 128 GB, you call up all your friends and nobody will have 128 GB of RAM to go out and create another node in order to focus or in order to prevent that DOS attack. So that way what happens is these, this decentralization matters a lot. And if this decentralization is maintained, uh, a future which we have, which we have uh, I think, imagined is something that is going to be there from Ethereum. So for context, what is DOS attack? DOS is denial of service. That means that you don't allow users to use the service. So that's DOS attack. And that is exactly what, what Ashwari is talking about. So, okay, let's not go into the... It's good to have a different comparison and just giving some context and understanding. But let's talk a little bit more and bring the focus back to Polygon again. When we talk about this layer twos and all these different batch, batch uploading and batch updating and all these different layer two scaling solutions, at the end of the day, you still need to validate all these transactions on the main net. And who pays for these transactions? Because you mentioned it's very expensive. Who pays for it? I mean, because the transactions are batched up and the transaction goes up in num in batches, so the transaction and automatically. So instead of you spending, if I told talk, talk to you, like the side chains can process somewhere around ten thousand transactions per second. So just talking about uh, these uh, the capability. So ten thousand transactions on Ethereum is gonna cost you two hundred and thirty k versus ten thousand transactions is if I just have to upload it on one as one transaction is costing me twenty three dollars. 
so that way what happens is the cost which is whatever is there so based on whatever nodes are running if the nodes are running the plasma so it is the duty of the plasma nodes to go out and upload it on the network so they bear the cost here so now let's take a step and move transition a little bit more to what the current solution is which is zk rollup we talked about that before we talked about we compare zk optimistic plasma chain pos chain all these different stuff can we talk a little bit more specific on what zk rollup is and how does it differ from the existing solution which is plasma and pos chain on polygon got it so let me explain it to you in the most layman term which is the cave door analogy now what happens in a cave door analogy is let's say i and you we are standing outside a cave and inside the cave there is a door and in order for uh, to come out from if when you enter from one side and come out from the other side you need to have that passcode uh in order to unlock that door and come out from the other side now that let's say i know the passcode and i want you to believe me that i know the passcode there are two ways to do it one way is where what i do is in uh, i tell you the password we both go inside the cave uh, and unlock that door and come out from the other side thereby i have i made you believe by doing it by doing that particular transaction that cool this is where this is how the things are done and you know th- this is what exactly what public blockchains are doing right now you explore the you you expose the transaction to to the validator he sees the transaction and approves it the other way is basically where what you do is instead of you going out and doing something like this i give you a better way which is i make you stand outside i tell you let me go inside and unlock that gate and come from the other side if i am able to do it even without telling you the password i've proved to you that i know the password this is what zero knowledge proofs are all about and this is exactly what zero knowledge proof is tell uh, doing private transactions on a public blockchain imagine uh, in imagine enterprises the biggest reason why enterprises cannot use public blockchains is because they do not want to divulge their data and everything on the public blockchain but if i can create a way in which without telling you the password i can prove to you that i know the password uh, yeah the 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 enterprises are very much wanting to go out and do that so this is what zero knowledge proof provides okay and so how does zero knowledge proof come into this thing called zk rollups so zk in zk rollups means zero knowledge how is it relevant yes that's exactly it is so basically what happens is there are mathematical calculations that are done based on which uh, this uh, this kind of a uh, analogy is pro- created where i don't tell you the password but i still prove to you that the password is there so that is how the zero knowledge proof works they go out and create an algorithmic way or a mathematical way to prove something without actually divulging the data out. so that is how these zero knowledge proof fit into the picture where all these platforms as they are evolving so most of these platforms are evolving except the one that we have with evi which is going to be live very soon it's on the testnet so there what we are doing is there is a platform there is a solution by evi which is ernest and young one of the biggest big four auditing firm in the world and what they have done is they have created a solution called nightfall on the ethereum mainnet uh the problem that they're still facing is they're not able to go out and scale the number of transactions because of the costing and the second thing is because of the privacy that is not getting 100% deployed through the solution now with uh, with attaching themselves to polygon this is what we are enabling we are enabling a way in which through mathematical calculations i, I cannot get into the mathematical calculation because uh, those are something which are way beyond my understanding as well so yeah this is something on a base on a granular level or on the basic level or on the upper level this is how the transactions are going to go through okay so let's take a look at the three different the three current solutions current scaling solutions of polygon one you have the proof of stake pos chain one you have plasma chain and thirdly you have zk rollups with proof of stake and plasma chain these are where we have all the different transactions we put them into a zip file we upload them to the main chain and it gets added these can be quite huge because every single transaction you have all the different details you have the passcode you have all the things about going from you have the road from going from the entry of the cave door to the exit of the cave door the analogy that aswari was talking about with zk rollups zk rollups uses a different kind of technology zero knowledge proof this technology has been in existence since the 1990s so it's not completely new it's not new to the blockchain world it exists no matter what and this is this helps to reduce the load reduce the um, amount of data that we're putting into our zip file because here you just need to you just need to you can remove some of the 
some of the unnecessary things. We just need the you know best proxy to to show that you have done this transaction, that this transaction is is validated and it's approved and it's completed and successful. Put all these different files, turn it into a zip file, and upload it on the main chain. Would you say that will be the comparison between the existing two solutions you have versus this new zk rollup solution that you guys are building? I mean, on ZK, uh, yeah, we, instead of going out and divulging the data, you just do some mathematical calculations and uh, you just bundle up the math. So you, you don't basically send the transactions. You just send the proof that, yes, this transaction is true. So the transactions are, uh, the full transactions are not even uploaded on the blockchain. Just the proofs are uploaded that, yes, this transaction is a legitimate transaction. So just for context for everyone listening, the difference between ZK rollups and optimistic rollups, they use the same kind of concept, but the mathematical proof is a bit different. The mathematical proof for ZK rollups is more intense, it's more specific, and it's, it requires a, a longer calculation time, but it's more robust. You know, when, it's, when you've proven it, it's proven, it's done and dusted, that's it. Optimistic rollup is where you reduce some of these constraints, you make it easier to, to do the calculation, easier to show the proof, but when you want to disprove something, you need to unroll them, you know, hence roll up. So you unroll them, you check the different, the different, uh, the different validations and transactions that's going on. And it takes a little bit more time to prove something is right or wrong. So these are the trade off between ZK roll up versus optimistic roll ups. The more robust one, the more, you know, sure that this is definitely the transactions and it's, it's secure. This is the ZK roll up solution. The trade off is that it takes more time. It takes more energy, it takes more effort. And the optimistic one is a lot easier, it's a lot quicker. And that's why you see a lot of layer two solutions. Right now they're using optimistic rollups, whereas Polygon is focusing on ZK rollups. It's not, it's not that one is better than the other, you just have different kind of trade-offs. They're all good in its own right. So how can, why did you guys go into ZK rollups when you already have Plasma chain and POS chain? How does that bring more value to Polygon users? Because uh, the biggest reason why we want that is because we want more of the enterprises to onboard because ultimately that uh, having blockchain does not mean that you will rewrite everything that is already there. The business logics are sound. That's why a lot of corporates are existing today. There is a Fortune 500. They did not go out and become Fortune 500 just out of thin air. They have already pre-approved. They have already they have the structure which is already working just that they want to make it better. So instead of just rewriting everything on the blockchain, isn't this the better way where the, uh, the organizations which already have the best ways to do or run the business, just that they get better by deploying themselves on the Polygon chain and enabling those solutions in a private way. That's what we can do for them to onboard us. Makes sense. So a lot of ZK rollups is helping to, and to, to attract new types of users, new types of developers and new types of application solutions on Polygon. Quick question. So with Plasma Chain and POS Chain, these are new chains that we can build on Polygon Network. So if Polygon is, if the entire crypto is, let's say, a, a skyscraper, we're using a lot of analogies in this chat. The base layer would be Ethereum, you know, the foundation. And then you can start building different kinds of things on your skyscraper. Then the scaling solution is Polygon. It's built on top of your foundation, which is Ethereum. And all the other applications are built on top of Polygon. Now, the part where we can build on top of Polygon, there are different ways to do that. We've got ZK rollups, we've got Plasma chain, we've got POS chain. Sometimes these chains are, you know, their own independent chains, child chains that you mentioned, where you can run your own validator node. With this solution, why is this not attractive enough for enterprises to say, huh, this is out there, this is in existence, and I can use this. Why do I want to use ZK rollups when I have other solutions available? I mean, none of the blockchains or none of the solutions that are out there. ZK rollups is more about ensuring that the secure that the inter, uh, or the confidentiality of the transactions is maintained. So none of the none of the solutions are not able to do it right now. Even with the ZK rollups and everything that is available, uh, what will happen is uh, you won't be able to go out and have dedicated solutions already built for them. Now, for this to happen, you need to have a way in which all these things can be deployed with the organizations, organizations if they want to onboard right now. So they have to go through a certain process of, uh, uh, you can say, building up their solutions or creating a, a way in which all these solutions can link with their existing solutions. 
So that is where I think we are trying to create the all types of solutions at first, and then going to the organization. So sometimes, if you talk about uh, certain jurisdictions, uh, those jurisdictions wants to uh, the the government does not allow the data to go outside that jurisdiction. So if I talk about India, in India, uh, any of the data that is there in India that is stored by fintechs and banking regulations, uh, they would not want to go out, and they would not want that data to be stored somewhere else. so we need uh, we need a way in which we can store that in that constituency itself so that is just one prop that that's just one example that i have given you so it it uh, so what happens is before no no such blockchain or no such solution out there is able to produce all the solutions so that if the enterprise has this requirement okay we have this particular zk solution for you if the enterprise so for example uh, the, we have four uh, solutions now one is polygon nightfall one is made and one is zero and one is thomas and sorry i cannot give you the, the the difference between them because that's yet to for me to also read much into it but yeah so they all uh, they all uh, try to tap out into the various layers of uh, i would say confidentiality and the security that the organizations would want or the or the governments of that particular country would want so that is where we go out and create a difference or we want to go out and we want to enable this thing here that makes a lot of sense thank you for sharing so to summarize all these different chains different solutions different layer 2 scaling solutions they all work and they work with different kind of trade offs or they work with different kind of considerations in mind these the reason they exist is because they're slightly different from one another and zk rollups one of the, the benefit zk zero knowledge proof zero knowledge this is very heavily focused on privacy and we do have this in zk snarks which is a privacy protocol to enable a lot of transactions to work and we can take this take this privacy feature and apply it in scaling the solution and this becomes very important for enterprise to come in and enterprise to use public blockchains they can always use their private blockchains but if they want to interact a little bit more with public chains then it needs if they want to interact a bit more with public chains they, it needs to be a bit it needs to focus a little bit more on privacy So with that being said, now let's look at what one of these headlines that has been hitting the news lately on Polygon on Sun the Sunflower game. And so you want to yeah, speak sure. a little let's, bit more about that. Let's go back up into like what's happening in the Polygon network itself. So briefly a while ago Aish you mentioned about a sunflower farming game and can you give our listeners a brief background on what that game is and how it affected uh, the polygon network so i think sunflower was a game which was deployed on polygon and uh, the problem with that uh, with that the problem that happened with the with the contract was uh, uh, that contract uh, had some rewards which were exploited by the bots so there were thousands of bots running to accumulate all the benefits which were there which which the game was giving out and hence it uh, instead of having the normal transactions being synced up every 25 minutes the number of transactions that started to get synced every 25 minutes were way more than it could have anticipated because of the bots running the whole system and uh, since the uh, since the contract was abandoned by i think the users uh the problem was that we would not we were not able to go out uh we were not able to uh, let's say use this and uh, uh we because of decentralization we couldn't have stopped it because uh, polygon again we cannot go out and we cannot stop any smart contracts because of this the number of transactions increased significantly on the polygon and because of this what happened the gas fees or the fees that you pay for a transaction which is generally 0.1 dollar that uh, that Uh, expanded to at least 10x so the normal fees that you were paying was 0.1 to 0.3 0.4 dollars as well that was the highest uh, that people have paid so this was the this was the problem that was caused here this was a problem uh, that uh, was figured out but because of decentralization and uh, anything deployed on the blockchain which cannot be edited anymore so we uh, nobody was able to do anything about it recently i think the some 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 of the programmers hacked it uh, so now the now the the program has stopped the game has stopped on polygon because of the hack and they are rebuilding and will be redeploying most probably in, in a couple of weeks they have given like somewhere around 3 weeks where they will go out and they will ensure that these bot attacks do not happen uh, so the best, the good part that came out was that polygon was resilient enough that it did not shut down the transactions were not rejected 
all the things that were happening they happened as they were just that the fees increased which is what a decentralized system or a blockchain should in ensure that the transaction should flow uh even if uh, so this is something which was there just that the fees rose that was the only cause of concern among the people because they they love everyone loves i mean the the lower uh, the lower fees is that that is provided by polygon okay great so mainly the problem was caused by bots who the network thought were actual people and congesting the networks causing a higher gas fees for everyone inside it is that correct absolutely and Um actually that you briefly touched on my next question already and like yes these are bots but then assuming if these were people that really like real people that congested uh the polygon network because of their transactions of the game like can you also give our listeners a brief picture of how ready polygon is for like a mass market adop- adoption by a lot of people like, for example uh a p- popular game or who comes in the network and like a lot of people join how ready is the network for that bulk big trans- big number of transactions I mean, uh, coming in i would say that yeah uh, uh, the only thing that happened was a cause the cause of concern was the bots so the bots had increased the number of transactions significantly not not just by a smaller bit but significantly i mean if, uh, um, so the bots were like literally running a lot of transactions and uh, how Well, how much polygon is ready for this i think uh, we this time we we saw the battle testing of the network that it was intact i think uh, the next thing so what we have to look upon is how we can increase the uh, increase the uh, number of transactions on the chain itself so that is where our focus is more towards and with other solutions like uh, which we are trying to do so i think uh, by the time those solutions also come in, into the market or come in the picture we would have already achieved that kind of uh, a far bigger scalability so i think that would not be a problem in the upcoming future it's great that's great. really so, great to hear what can we expect from polygon in 2022 in terms of techni- technological improvements and economic changes uh, i would say in the technological the best and the biggest thing that we have is the zero knowledge proof apart from that our nft world is getting built the gaming world is getting built uh, there are a lot of there are a lot of vcs and everyone which are coming and pooling in together with polygon to ensure that the world that we are creating or the solutions that we are building they are they are they reach the correct place they are ensured that they they, they have the correct ways in it uh so the biggest thing that we have is i would say three dimensional uh the first dimension is something which is uh, where you go out and you talk about the nfts uh nft world or the gaming and the nft world if you see the uh, stats of open sea we are already we have already surpassed uh the number of nfts being sold and uh, traded on the open sea for ethereum so that is which is going to blow up even more that's the first thing the second thing is uh, when we talk about enterprise onboarding imagine the business world taking care, getting into uh, the already established business world not the new startups but the already established business worlds just adopting polygon for its zero knowledge proof solutions that we have so that is where the users of those uh, platforms will onboard polygon automatically because the transactions are happening on polygon so that way we have more number of users coming in from the enterprise and the third thing for which i think uh, everyone agrees uh, where the defi world comes in so we already have a lot of solutions which are already built on polygon recently we in uh, we uh went live on uniswap there are such other blue chip protocols which are going to be live very soon i cannot disclose the names obviously so they are going to be live here itself so a lot of transactionals uh which were happening on the ethereum or a lot of users who were stuck in ethereum but were not able to use it will be unleashed so again more number of people more number of uh, transactions and more efficiency into the system so that is where i see polygon in 2022 trying to acquire a major share of everything. Awesome. Very exciting 2022 for Polygon. So, let me summarize what we've talked about today. And Polygon is really a scaling layer 2 scaling solution currently focusing on Ethereum. So, if you think of Ethereum using an analogy, think of Ethereum as for transactions to happen, you need to go to take the bus from one place to the other via the roads in the city. What Polygon is doing is to build interstates, is to build highways and and express ways to go from one place to the other scaling solutions on this highway there are different ways to do it 
you've got different kind of roads, different kind of paths, different kind of materials to build these highways. Specifically, in context, what, do, what does that mean? It means that you have things like plasma chain, like POS chain, ZK rollups, optimistic rollups, lightning chains, all these are different kind of scaling solutions. What Polygon is doing is to focus on scaling solutions for Ethereum, for Ethereum's main chain, so that more people can be doing different transactions. At the end of the day, it will all be on Ethereum's main chain, but using different, make it cheaper and make it easier for other people to be building on Ethereum via Polygon. So that's the general idea. And the latest update in Polygon today is ZK rollups. What is ZK rollups? Two things. The first one is it ZK, zero knowledge, it stands, it stands for zero knowledge, and it's a cryptography that existed in the 19, 1900s. And this is helping to preserve privacy. So why, why do we need that? What value does it bring to users? And why, would, why do we want to build a brand new layer two solution when we already have the Plasma chain and the POS chain on, on Polygon? And that's because the key difference is privacy. And with privacy, you can attract different kinds of users like enterprise solutions wanting to build on public chains and public networks. So then we have now we have big companies existing on the same platform as all of us, Ethereum mainnet, and we get to interact with them very easily. And for them to attract them here and for them to be building, you need to provide privacy in this in this world. So where are we with Polygon right now? Polygon is focusing a lot on games, a lot on NFT space, a lot on scaling with different kind of attracting different types of users, the DeFi space, the blue chip DeFi, the NFT gaming world, and the enterprise world, all coming together and all building on Polygon, which is really ultimately building on Ethereum and having more transactions, more people growing the network effects of Ethereum. Lots of things to look at in 2022, and we're very, very excited. Anything else you would like to add, Ashwari? I think that's pretty much it. I think we have a lot of things and a lot of grounds to cover slowly and steadily. We will do it, and um, we would see uh, we would see a good amount of growth into the network in the upcoming. Great. Well, thank you everyone for your time. Thank you, Ashwari. Thank you, Enzo, and thank you all of you guys who ask questions and listen to us. Today, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for staying throughout this entire video. If you're interested to learn more and you want to join the community, do check out our Discord. Check out our academy and you get to watch these videos for free as well, without any ads. And also grab the book that I've talked about earlier on. The book summarizes a lot of what we're trying to build, what we're trying to design, and the different aspects that can be changed during the entire design process. We also just launched Econteric. Econteric is really economics plus esoteric because this space is so complicated and so difficult. What we want to do is to make it easier for anyone to come and learn and be part of this system. So in Econteric, we are breaking down the different analytics and different data to give you more insights to understand the robustness from a very fundamental level of the health of this ecosystem. So check out econteric.com and I'll see you there. Bye!